I'm very fortunate today to have with me Professor Bill Fulford, who is the lead editor of our latest Oxford Handbook, the Oxford Handbook of Philosophy and Psychiatry. Bill, thank you for coming today. Um, I wanted to begin, um, Bill, you trained as a psychiatrist. How did you get into philosophy? Uh, well, really by ducking out of uh, medicine <laughs> at medical school. Um, I, I'd always been interested in philosophy as mm -hmm. well as in, in biology and medicine. And um, I was very fortunate at Cambridge. I, I was uh, taught by Donald McKinnon, who was the professor of moral philosophy. In those days, you just went along and said, I'd like to learn some philosophy. And oh, you wonderful. learned some philosophy. And then uh, Mary Warnock in, uh, in Oxford, uh, and also uh, actually a number of uh, psychiatrists also supported me, Dennis Hill at the Institute of Psychiatry, and then Michael Gelder here again in Oxford. So mm -hmm. I, had, I was well supported. To it do. sounds as yeah. though you were. Um, the Oxford Handbook of Philosophy and Psychiatry is the 41st volume in the IPPP series, which is amongst one of Oxford's most successful series. Why has the field expanded so much? Well, I, I, I mean, there might be different takes on that and, mm -hmm. and uh, a history perhaps still to be written. But um, I guess there's been two key factors. One is institutional support and the other is the very collegial way the field has developed. Okay. So, I mean, institutionally, uh, I've mentioned some of the individuals who have supported the field, but right from the start, the Royal College of Psychiatrists was very supportive. Then internationally, the World Psychiatric Association. Um, and in philosophy, a number of departments have picked the field up very strongly. I mean, here in the UK, we have both a uh, very strong uh, department of Durham yeah. doing more phenomenological work. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's Tim Thornton uh, at, the Inst at uh, Central Lancashire uh, and uh, of course here in Oxford we have many people actually working in areas of philosophy relevant to psychiatry and, uh, and indeed neuroscience. Yes, we're very fortunate here. Um, you say it's also collegial. Yes, um, uh, it's been a particular feature of the field. Often with new fields they quickly fracture right. uh, into, into sort of competing tribes. <laughs> um, this field actually has rather brought tribes together, and, mm. and notably in philosophy, uh, much of the 20th century there was a big split into more continental philosophy, like phenomenology yeah. and analytic philosophy that we characteristically do in, in Oxford. But the field has very much grown with both disciplines coming together, and that's <coughs> very much reflected in the handbook. I mean, among our uh, editors, uh, people like Martin Davis, Tim Thornton, uh, George Graham, John Sadler, who's mm. a psychiatrist like myself, or rather on the analytic side, and then Giovanni Stangolini and Richard Gibbs mm. brought very strong um, phenomenology, psychoanalysis uh, in, into the mix. So it's sort of brought the tribes yeah. together, as it were, yeah. and that's been a particular strength, I think. So my final question, where mm. do you think that the field goes from here? Well, of course, onwards and upwards <laughs> would be the... the, the the, the right thing to say, but I think it's probably more accurate to say wider and deeper. Okay. Um, wider because um, there are areas of philosophy still to move into. I mean, the field is built very strongly on analytic and continental philosophy, yeah. but that represents only about 25% of the great philosophical traditions around the world. Okay. And we're already seeing some interesting developments through uh, Indian philosophy on the one hand, and also with Verdi van Staden, who's um, professor of Philosophy and Psychiatry in Pretoria uh, and working with the way African philosophy can contribute to mental health practice but also as part of this field of philosophy and psychiatry. Mm -hmm. The deeper dimension um, is very much how the field connects up with research and of course there is already quite a growing connection with the neurosciences but I think what we're missing is very much the voice of people who have experience of mental distress and disorder. Right. So it's that voice of experience that is missing very largely from the mix and that um, coming together with philosophy and the neurosciences and other areas of cognitive science yeah. I think could, could make a big difference. Um, how we do that um, we still really need to work out and, and, and work at. And I think that's where the website that uh, is supporting the handbook could take us a step in the right direction. Yeah. And we already have on the website, when it goes live, uh, a wonderful collection, both of uh, more traditional case material from one of our colleagues, uh, Victoria Alison Bolger, 
but also a, a unique collection of service user narratives that's been brought together by Jaisri Kalathil, who's a service user researcher with the Mental Health Foundation. Right. So we hope the website will yeah, take us a step Yeah, it's a real strength direction. of the handbook, mm. a real strength. Good. Well, thank you, Bill, for taking the time to speak with us today. I've really thank enjoyed you, it. Yes, thank you.